Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to another episode of the Amazons and Africaners interview series from the stable of Agbari Multimedia Company. Here we showcase and celebrate Amazons and Africaners on the African continent. On this show today, um, I have an amazing guest. And as you know, our mission is to inspire you into greatness as we celebrate winning Amazons and Africaners in Africa. And we have them share their stories, the success stories with us and the journey along the way. If you're a new subscri subscriber, welcome to the Agbari channel and to our returning viewers. It's great to have you here again. Don't forget to like, subscribe and drop your questions in the comment sections. Ah, like I said earlier today, I have an outstanding African And Before I bring him into the studio, let's get to know a little bit about him. Amex Diallo is an experienced research assistant and lecturer with a demonstrated history of working in the farming industry. He's a strong education professional who graduated from Gastonberger University. Ahmed was a Mandela Washington Fellow to the University of Iowa TP College of Business, where he obtained outstanding knowledge in business administration and management. He's currently acting as a senior interpreter for Japanese experts in Papri's Japan International Cooperation Project and also in charge of the management of the project. This role entails planning, financial management, arrangement, schedules, event planning, partners and stakeholders linkage. Diallo Ahmed was the project manager for the Good Governance and Community Wellbeing Initiative funded by the USA Embassy in Dakar between June 2017 and February 2018 in Senegal, Niambato. He is skilled in public speaking, English, management, Microsoft Excel, and customer service. Ahmed is an outstanding African and role model to millions of African youths. Allow me, yes. to, allow me to welcome you once again. You know, okay. the, interview, the interview series is supposed to help inspire our future youth. Let's just get to know any other thing that is not in the bio that we just took right now, because that bio is enough for me, already intimidating as it is. But let me know, is there any other thing that we don't know about you that you would like to let us know? <laughs> Thank you very much for for giving me the chance and the opportunity to to converse with you on the Agbari channel. So you said everything about who I am actually. So there is nothing much to add apart that my entrepreneurial activities. So I am working in the farming industry and I'm mainly producing rice and vegetable in the Senegal River Valley area where I have a, my own company and working with around 15 young Senegalese who are very determined to help the country reach the self-sufficiency program in terms of food. This is amazing. You know, farming and then you're studying for your PhD, you're lecturing, so many things that you're doing all at once. How do you combine all of this? How do you make it work? Yeah, yeah, it's not easy because it requires a lot of time and energy. And uh, it's just uh, it's just a matter of, of planning. So I'm fully working for the Japanese corporation, as you as you said. But the place in which I'm working and the university, it's not too far from from each other. So usually when I have to lecture at the university, I just go and quickly, you know, the traffic is not like Dakar because it's in St. Louis. So St. Louis is not like Dakar, so the traffic is, you know, it's it's light, so you can move easily from one place to another. Then, so yeah, in my free time during weekends and or in the afternoons after leaving my office at the Jaika Corporation, so I I take time to to look into my my businesses. So I have a center also, uh, what we call the Youth Empowerment Center, the Yes Senegal here, not too far also from the from the university, it's just right at the opposite of the main entrance of the university where we have our offices. So, so it just requires a lot of time and energy, but I always try to see how to combine everything. So that's it. That's the life of a young, enthusiastic African. 
Premier, that's how I like to put it. Mm -hmm. ah, one of the things I, I learned from you now is, you know, you, you try your push for excellence. I see mm -hmm. this lacking in African youth, and it, presently even amongst African leaders, how do we bring back, you know, excellence into service? How do we demand excellence in service and get Africa to, beyond that third world country status that we are? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think that ex excellency is, you know, uh, one of it's it's a paramount thing, you know, when when you when you have to work or when you have to prove your that your life is worth of it in in in, in these present times. So 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 it's not obvious, as I said, but excellence should be should be the credo because because if you lack it you will not illustrate yourself so so the skills that you need to have will not be there when when the time will come so so excellence excellence and excellence that's what i would advise to all the young africans to be able to show who you really are this starts when you are a student when you are very young that's where you should have uh, the cult of excellence try to prove yourself why you are at high school why you are at the university and then once you have all the knowledge, the, compet the the skills that you really need, so you will prove yourself in whatever area you are, you are whichever area you are working. So, 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 so I really value that 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 excellence criteria because ultimate, ultimately it defines who we who we are. And that's who we are. We're excellent people in Africa. Thank you mm. so much. Let me go on a short musical break. And when we come back, we'll continue with the interview. Welcome back. Um, I'm still speaking with an amazing happy premier, an inspiration from Africa, Mr. Ahmed Diallo. Mr. Ahmed, quickly, um, you know, within your profile, I see that you've done exceptionally well in public service and as a social happy premier, with all the choices that you have, you know, made so far. Can you share some of your strategies, you know, some of the challenges that you've had the risk that you've had to take and the strategies that you used to face them before. Yeah, thank you very much for this relevant question indeed. So, so, so it's not easy as a young African to have the strategies that you really need to, to, to boost yourself, you know, to, to show, to reveal your true self as we, as we refer to it. Uh, part of my life, it has not been easy for me. So it, it at times it was it was really difficult but i had patience i think this is number one of the of of the guidance that that i that i had and, and which really helped me you know to be patient okay to be open minded and 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 to 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 to, to try to widen your network as as much as possible try to meet the good guys okay in your life Try to make the good connection, not the good, but the right connection. So, so this this is really helpful. And then try to build things step by step. So if you want to do everything at the same time and you don't have the, the required skills, competence and, and energy, that it's it's not everyone that have the same the same skills. So so, so it depends from one person to another. You may have some 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 models yeah uh, models which you are looking at to but 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 you will not be able to take everything from these people because you are not the same person and and that's really really helpful and and and, and relevant to your career so so try to take what is interesting in that role model for you and then apply it for you and try to take something else into someone someone else that's how how, how i really managed to achieve to have all these achievements so i have been really patient i have tried to find in my cycle helpful people who always inspire me and give me the motivation whenever whenever i need it and then also try to use your own resources start by yourself don't wait for the others to lead your words this this is not this is not possible so so, so you should invest your 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 own resources your own energy your own skills and convince people that that you are really the right person 
to which into into in, in in whom we can believe so 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 this is really this is really important this is really helpful as a young entrepreneur to 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 understand that it's not overnight that you will achieve everything so the patience finding the right people that will be around you and then giving your own resources and then being open minded and then have ambitions and big dreams so so once you have all this so 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 i think that you have the good strategies to make things work as the way you plan thank you so much i learned patience support system mm -hmm. start with your own resources be mm -hmm. open minded you know and yeah. give yourself you know, whatever you have prove yourself so people will see you to the sure. potential you have i'm aware of your partnership your project with the u.s industry let's hear mm -hmm. more about the good governance and community well-being project that you did with the u.s embassy what yeah. lessons you share with our african youth about that governance is one you know about that because you yeah. know governance is one of the biggest problems that we have in africa mm -hmm. yeah yeah this this program project was part of the of the follow-up of the manila washington fellowship program to which I participated and to which a lot of young Africans actually participated. And we have to pay tribute to this program actually and to the founders and those who really, you know, drafted it and, and, and make it come into, into, into a reality. Okay. So, 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 so it's really a, an interesting program. And I think that if there are Africans who are watching us today, they can just go on the website of the Manila Washington Fellowship and try to apply for this year. That could be really helpful. So when we come back from this program, so the U.S. Embassy in Dakar launched a project and we apply with a team and then we won the grant. And the grant, the project was about good governance and, and transparency in Senegal. So we implemented the target area of the, of the project was in, in the center of Senegal in the regions of Kaulag, for those who know much Senegal and 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 and, and Fatik, just near the Gambian border. So so our target groups, it was not people involved in 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 in, in the top management of the government. But we, we 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 thought at that time that good governance and transparency should start from the grassroots. It should start from each one of us. And if we look at at, at, at the society, at the way it is made, it, it is made in Africa. So we have a lot of organizations at the grassroots. These organizations are not working perfectly. So we have our mothers who are who are involved into into working groups. So we have fishermen who are involved or who are who are who are working, operating under unions, and, and we have young people, you know, involved into their own organizations. But when you when we when we when we analyze these organizations we realize that they the way they they, they, they work it, it lacks the transparency it lacks the democracy it, it lacks the accountability that we are looking at and 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 we have to train these people around these basics of of good governance of of how you of how we should include everyone into the into the decision making process how we, we we have to make everyone feel that he is really involved in in in, in the in the organizations uh he is part of so, so so that's really how we how we how we how we formulated the project and we went on training these women these villagers in the far corners of senegal making them uh, understand that it's their own thing to take up to think and and have their voices heard in their organization and also in the whole country so we did this for, for 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 many months for around a year and the outcomes of the project were really outstanding because we had some people who, who would say listen i have never felt myself so important in the organization i'm working i never knew that we need to have that accountability that inclusiveness in the work in the in the way we are we are, we are working and, and 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 I think if we start, you know, these outreach activities, so we had talks with whole villagers in the marketplaces. So 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 if we widen these 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 
uh, raising the awareness in the in the grassroots it helps us really make the good choices in the top management it helps us to, to to see how we select our leaders in the local councils at the parliament and even at the head of the of, of the government so so this was really the objective and we had really genuine outcomes and and, and the embassy itself the u.s embassy in dakar appreciated so much the result that we got in that project hmm. two major things you mentioned um, you know, transparency accountability and inclusiveness but like mm. you said it has to be grassroots up mm -hmm. that's from the grassroots up so most of us are youth in nigeria for instance are so focused on the leadership mm -hmm. you know at the head and we're not worried about what happens from the grassroots i think that's where the missing link is i'd like to quickly just you know hear your take on what success and failure is considering that you must have done this a while and something could have been failure that could have made you give up why didn't you what do you define how do you define success and failure yeah that's that's not an easy question for an for an entrepreneur for an afropreneur i think that but but it, it's it's part of our life success and and, and failure success is is only valuable because of failure and failure also is only valuable because of success so so it's it's there are twins you know in our in our in our life and and the point is how to separate them and a, a, a failure may, may be a success and and a success also may be a failure it, it just it's just the approach that we have toward these things that really define what we'll be doing the next day. So, so in my life, I have, I have, I have failed. I have failed lamentably in some, in some, in in some projects, in some endeavors that I attempted to do, and and which ultimately failed. But but the the good point was that whenever I fail, so so I wake up in in the morning, in the next morning, really energized and and ready as ever to face up the coming challenges. In my agricultural activities, so when I started, so so it did not went well. So I took my money, I invested, I relied on people, but the result was not good. So 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 I, I lost my money, I lost the confidence I had, I trusted people who really betrayed me, and this was not motivating. If mm. I if I limited myself to saying no, we cannot develop this country, we cannot work with people like this. So I would resign. So, so, and that resignation would have a certain weight on, on, on the society. Another example of, 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 of failure, when I first applied to the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program, so I failed, but I had really mm -hmm. confidence the next year, and it was the last year that Barack Obama was at, at the presidency, I told myself, this was my year. And, 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 and my chance was in that last year. So if I resigned and, and told myself, no, this program is not for me, I would have never succeeded into it, okay? So, 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 and we have hundreds of, or, or, or thousands of examples of famous entrepreneurs who, who failed, but who, who, who kept on working on their projects, on their programs, until they, 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 they get the right thing. Thank you so much, Mr. Yeah. Dali. On this. Quickly, let's talk to a, a youth watching us, mm -hmm. a young African who wants to be a social entrepreneur like you, someone aspiring. Because like you said, <laughs> every failure, you dust yourself, you try again. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd like you to if, if, uh, you know, advise someone who is aspiring to be like you. What exactly would be the attributes that you advise they have? Yeah, my, my, my usually when I when I when I give advice, so 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 it depends actually on 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 who you are and what do you want to do, to, to to do. But there are there are main things actually, if I can frame it like it, that we should aware, should be aware of. And the first thing is to good is to be good in what you are doing. So, so you need to be informed if you are an entrepreneur, if you are working in the rice industry, if you are working in the food industry, if you are working in the gas industry, if you are working in the petroleum industry, if you are working in the health sector. So, so you need to be good 
in that domain. If you are not good, you should find those who are the best in that domain. Because it's only when you are good, it's only when you are enough informed, if you only when you are enough aware of the environment in which you are living, that you can innovate. And we come back to, to, to what you were referring to a while ago, excellence. So, so, so you need really to be good in that domain. So you, you need to, to, to read, to read a lot, to get informed, to visit websites, to have documentation, to be in touch with people who are making the world moving. So, so if you don't do that, you will be disconnected. You will not know what are the trends. And if you are disconnected, there is no way that you can be part of the innovators. So, so, so that's one thing. Be good, be informed. And the, and the second would be to, 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 be, to be determined, to have the commitment, the motivation that you need to do. So it will never be easy, especially in Africa. You will fail. You will be demot demotivated day in, day out. But you need to hold to, 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 to your, to your belief that you are the one who will succeed. So, so, so you, you don't have time to waste. You don't have time to, to sleep in the morning until eight or nine or 10 in the morning. So, so, so no, even if you don't have a job, even if you are doing nothing. So, 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 and I was two days ago, I was, I was reading that, that wonderful book, the miracle morning by, by Al Elrod, a, a, a very interesting book that can be really helpful for, for young entrepreneurs. So, so you need always to be motivated, to be always strong. That, that strength where you need it. And then also you need to have, to find the value to your life. Ask yourself, what is the significance of my coming into this life? And ask yourself, how do you want to be remembered once you will never be here? Mm. What, 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 which legacy would you, would you leave here for those who will come after? So, so, so if you're asking these kind of questions and know that you will be part of those who will change the world, who will change the continent, you, you need to know that you have a place in this. You can contribute to this. And once you will no longer be here, people will be remembered you as the person who did this and who did that and who achieved this and, and that. And you will, you, will, you will forever be remembered as a hero, as a model, and, and that's a legacy we cannot, be, we cannot be proud ever. So grateful. Thank you so much. So how can we find you on social media? How can listeners or viewers find you on social media? Or do you have a mentoring group that you run? Yeah, I, I am. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you click on my, if you search me in, in, in Facebook, you can find me with the same name that appears on, in the screen, Ahmed Jalu. And then we have also the Youth Empowerment School. We have also a, a, a Facebook page. And uh, I think that's it. I'm also in LinkedIn. So, so you can, you can follow me on, in LinkedIn and in, and in Twitter. It's the same. It's, it's the same now. You can follow me on, on social media. Thank you yeah. so much, sir. Let me quickly run through what you said earlier. So for a youth that is aspiring to be an Amas Diallo in the future, <laughs> first of all, be good at what you do. Get informed, read, you know, find out whatever field you find yourself getting from. Be determined, you know, and be consistent, committed to whatever it is that you're doing. There's no time to waste, in his own words, no time. Also find your purpose in life is very important. And think about that legacy you want to leave behind as well. So these are the kind of thoughts that will fill your mind. And don't worry, all the big brother whatever will be fine. While you're thinking about this, you won't get distracted. I completely agree with my guest. And I must say thank you so much for coming. On behalf of myself, Nima, and the management of Ambari Multimedia, I must say thank you for your time and all the impactful words that you shared with us today thank you so much sir and then um, to our viewers watching thank you for watching don't forget to like and share and don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms instagram twitter and facebook thank you mr diallo for joining us today I'm thank so you thank, thank you so nima much. for inviting me
And also thanks to Aziz Butali, who reached out okay. to me from the University of Iowa. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye.